guys, how's it going? I'm out in the garden doing a little bit of maintenance today and I'm getting ready to cut back this Caryopteris. So this is called a Beyond Midnight Caryopteris. I planted one out in the landscape last year. It was absolutely beautiful, but I just went through this morning and I cut all of my Caryopteris back that I already have planted. Um, and then I got to thinking it might be something that you might like to see, especially if you've never done it before. Then I remembered I had one left out here in the greenhouse. I wintered it over in this container. So I'm gonna show you how to prune this one back. And it's very important for the health of your plant to prune it back because it keeps it very dense and full. And that's how we want all of our plants to look. Um, and springtime is the time to do it. They bloom on new wood. Um, so even if we cut it back today, it's still gonna form its beautiful blooms this year. And you do wanna wait till it starts to push growth in the spring because then you can easily tell how far back you need to cut it. Um, so for example, let me show you this branch right here. First of all, I should mention this one still has all of its flower seed heads from last year. You can go in uh, in late fall after the plant goes dormant and you can cut back all of the seed heads. You don't wanna go too far down into the woody base, but just kind of shear off the seed heads that way it'll prevent any seeds from possibly spreading in your garden. I don't typically do that because I don't have that kind of problem in our garden. They don't seem, seem to seed themselves everywhere. Um, so I just wait till spring. And then if we look at this branch right here, if you follow it down from the top, you can see the first bud right here is coming out, but it's kind of weak and small. So we're gonna continue down the branch until we get to our first really robust looking set of buds. This is where we wanna cut it back. So I'm just gonna take my pruners open them up here and just make a cut right above the sets of leaves. Just like that. So you can see it looks really good and healthy. And that's basically what we wanna do on this whole plant. We wanna follow each branch back, cut it right above a good set of buds like this one right here. This is a second example. Follow it down. You can see a bunch of little buds up here, but it gets a little bit messy. So I'm gonna follow it down to where it's on a single branch down to this set right here and make a cut. Just like that. So what I'm gonna do is just prune up the rest of this shrub. I like to kind of make sure it's a nice shape, kind of a little taller in the middle and kind of tapered toward the sides. So I have a nice spherical shape in the end. When I'm done pruning it, we're gonna actually take it out into the garden and plant it as well. looks really good. So you guys, if you're going to a garden center and you're looking for a Caryopteris this time of year, there's a really good chance it's gonna look just like this, just freshly shorn back, lots of fresh leaves coming out, but they don't bloom until late summer. So, you know, don't expect to see a Caryopteris in full, it's full glory early on in the season, but spring is the best time to get them in the ground. That way they can get established, they can grow on for a full season before they have to go through a winter. Um, and the reason for that is if your soil holds on to excess moisture in those cooler temperatures in the fall and winter, it can cause a lot of root rot problems with this plant. Um, so you just wanna make sure to get it in as early as possible, put it in a spot that's really well draining, full sun, um, because these actually like drought once they're established, they're just a really tough plant. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go grab my shovel so I can dig this out. I actually had it in this container, it was beautiful. Big Caryopteris, I had a hot and cold variety, it's called hot and cold of a red hot poker, so it's kind of an orangey and yellow. So that with the blue is beautiful. This Euphorbia, I had some annuals, dark purple, it was just, it was awesome. But I'm gonna dig this out and then we're gonna go put it in the landscape. So this is where the Caryopteris is gonna go and I think this is a perfect spot because this area receives sun for almost the entire day. We do have a little cloud cover today. So it's a beautiful day to be out in the garden working, um, but I think it's gonna be especially pretty with what's planted around it. And I know it doesn't look like much now, but it soon will. So right in front here, I have a drift of penicetum that grows about 12 to 18 inches tall. Beautiful, soft, grassy texture, um, emerald green in color. Then I'll have this layer, so a step up, this will be two to two and a half feet tall. And this has a really um, beautiful foliage on it, very soft, beautiful blue blooms late summer through a heavy frost. And then right behind me, I've got summerific berry awesome hibiscus. So when these are in bloom, this will be in bloom at the same time. These have huge dinner plate size pink blooms. That matched with these blue blooms, I think it's gonna be a beautiful show. So anyway, I'm gonna get this planted in the ground and then we'll take a look at the area. We're all done and I can't wait to show you guys what this is gonna look like later on once everything else starts to grow. 
And I think the only other thing I didn't mention about Caryopteris in general, this variety is a zone five through nine. They are resistant to deer if that's something you deal with. And like I said before, they attract pollinators like crazy, honeybees, butterflies, hummingbirds. So if you have a really dry, hot spot um, that you want something that provides color and also attracts pollinators, this is a great option for you. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.